In this section, we spend time working with the MySQL dump utility. This useful utility helps you to dump from one database to files that can be used to import data into another database. It also functions as a utility for backing up databases altogether. So if you don't have an enterprise backup system with a MySQL agent, you can use MySQL dump in a script that perhaps runs from the cron tab on a recurring basis, perhaps nightly, which dumps the contents of the database. The dump literally dumps SQL statements with the data embedded. So let's say there's a table or a database with a table and the table contains 10 rows. The MySQL dump utility will include statements for recreating the database as well as the table as well as the structure of the table and the various rows within the table. So let's take a look at how this all works after we've created a section called MySQL dump used for backing up DBs. And the main utility is called MySQL dump. A which of MySQL dump reveals that it's in user bin and an RPM query file for, for those of you on RPM based systems reveals that this particular utility is also a member of the MySQL client standard package. Having said all that, let's run MySQL dump with the help option to see what's available. We'll scroll up. These are the default variables towards the bottom as usual. And above you'll see many of the options that can be used from the command line. The general syntax is as follows. MySQL dump followed by any options which generally include the username, the host name, and a prompt for password or perhaps even the password embedded, followed by features such as database and optionally tables. If not, then the database name itself with all included tables will be dumped or backed up to a file. It's an ASCII text file, so if you want to encrypt it, you should use some sort of third-party utility to ensure that the contents can't be read by unauthorized folks. You may also back up all databases on the system, which is where we'll begin our studies. This is an easy way to dump everything, including the MySQL and additional databases. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this would work. Now we're going to follow standard MySQL syntax when using outputting to text files by naming our files with a suffix of .sql. So note, it's good practice, or common practice we should say, to dump dbs to files with dot sql suffix so that when you see it you recognize it there isn't a hard requirement and in fact the file doesn't require a suffix but it's just a common practice by mysql administrators and you'll find it throughout the documentations that are available online so before dumping we should confirm what databases actually exist on the local system by connecting to the db using the user root we'll specify the password on the command line followed by the E option which allows us to run in between single quotes a simple query such as show databases. There are databases including test, tempdb, and mysql and information schema. If we want these databases to be dumped to a file we simply use mysql dump and the all-databases option. So that's the all databases option this will dump to the screen all databases, but we have yet to specify any options. You know that the options should come first, including user, root, and perhaps a prompt for the password. And of course, let's just double check our syntax for the all databases. Let's kill this session and double check that again. We'll pipe the output to less. The all databases can be specified in a few ways, all dash databases. Let's take a look at that again rerun our command and we have it correctly specified. Let's go ahead and let's specify the proper password. Now what you'll notice is a dump to the screen of the databases that are defined. Here they are, including the table structures and the actual embedded data which includes 
the users on the system and so forth. We can specify individual tables as well, but first let's get this into a file and see what it would take to import this to another system. So rather than dumping the standard out, let's rerun the dump of all databases. We'll specify the password on the command line, and at the end of the line we'll send the output into a file called all underscore dbs dot sql. We've dumped it. Notice there's an error which says ignoring options databases due to invalid value MySQL. Let's take a brief look at that all underscore dbs file. It's not too big. It's only 20k, but it contains all the requisite information to recreate the databases that are on the server. Current database MySQL, and here's the syntax to create it. So if this were imported on any SQL standard system, the system would execute a create database what you see between the forward slash asterisk and the asterisk forward slash represents comments or C style comments. The name of the database is MySQL. A use is issued and then the tables are created but first a drop executes in the event that the table already exists. Here's the drop and if the table exists it'll be dropped and then a new table called columns underscore priv with the following structure is created. After the structure is created, the data is dumped, and then we move on to the, ex the re remainder of the tables. And eventually you'll see data that correlates to the tables such as user, as well as DB, as well as host, where we know we have data. So for example, let's grep root from all dbs.sql, and here you see values for root at localhost, for example. Let's grep Linux CBT from all DB SQL and here you see values for Linux CBT over here towards the right we're able to recreate the values for root at Linux CBT DB1 super so now we have all databases dumped to a file and it can be re-imported but the, the database in our system that has most of the data called MySQL mimics MySQL the default database for any instance of MySQL in other words the other system on our network where we could import this data already has a table or a database called MySQL with the same tables. So ideally we want to dump from one database to another database that does not have the same DB. So from one DBMS to another. Kind of like using a DTS transfer wizard in the SQL environment. You usually go from source to destination with the destination usually not having the tables defined. So in order to dump individual databases, use MySQL dump, followed by the databases option, followed by the name of the database that you're interested in dumping. Now we have a database called tempdb, or we should. We can dump this to the screen, but we didn't specify user information. Let's go ahead and do that. The user will be root, password abc123, and there's the information required to recreate tempdb, although tempdb does not have a single table. Nonetheless, if we dump this information into a file and then import it on a remote system, it will work. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll send this into tempdb.sql. And now it's in a file called tempdb.sql. On the remote system, Linux CBT Media 1, let's connect to see whether or not we actually have a temp db data database so we'll connect as root we'll force it to prompt us for a password and the default is to connect to the local host so we don't need to specify the host name in this particular instance so let's go ahead and connect hopefully we have the right password defined if not we'll try again and at some point we'll get it let's try to log in again and let's try it and the password is actually blank, which explains why it took so long to change. So in fact, on the remote system, we should go ahead and set it to what the local system is by using the MySQL admin utility, using also the user root, and we'll have it prompt us for a password, and then use the password command to set a new password of abc123. Now the new password has been set, and if we execute MySQL, user root, prompt us, it'll prompt us, and it should accept ABC123, and it has a select user, 
reveals that we're logged in as root at localhost in a show databases reveals that there is no temp db on this local system which is exactly what we expect which means we can copy the file that we've just dumped let's lsltr start at sql we can copy the temp db.sql over to the remote system so let's go ahead and use scp which is a secure copy proto protocol or program based on the ssh protocol to copy temp db.sql over to the remote systems user let's see who we're logged in as there we're logged in as root, so we'll copy it into root's home directory, which means we don't need to specify the username, but we do need to specify the host name followed by a colon and the password. Now the files on the remote system, if we lsltr start on SQL, there it is. Now in order to import this particular SQL file into the local system, we simply use the MySQL command. We didn't have to copy the file, but we're just pretending that we are moving in between hosts and not using MySQL to perform the transfer. We could have dumped rather than to a file directly into the input stream of the MySQL client causing it to execute the contents of the tempdb.sql file on the host of our choosing. We'll show you how to do that shortly. So let's go ahead and we're going to import the contents of tempdb.sql by executing MySQL user root have it prompt for password or simply specify it on the command line abc123 followed by an import of the temp db.sql file let's echo the exit status and so far so good which means if we connect to the local instance using mysql and a prompt for a password we should then be able to go in and execute a show databases which will show the newly created tempdb. So tempdb has been created on the remote system. Now, of course this is a slow way of doing it but it does work. From the source system we dumped the database to a file. Now the database could have contained thousands of tables with hundreds of thousands if not millions or billions of records. It would just simply take longer but we dumped it to a file then used the secure copy program to copy the file over to the destination. We did mention that we could easily have sent the output stream of MySQL dump into the input stream of the MySQL client and cause it to execute accordingly. But in order to do so, we'll need privileges on the remote system. So let's do a select user, comma host, comma password from MySQL.user on the remote system to ensure that we have a user who can connect. Notice these users are all specific to the local system, so we should execute a grant statement such as the following grant all on star dot star, or we could create a database that's owned by this particular user. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll create database and we'll call it something such as tempdb. In fact, tempdb exists, so let's create tempdb2. So create database tempdb2. This is a new database, and a show database is reveals as such. Then we'll grant all on tempdb2.star to a newly created user. We'll call this user root at, and we should specify the host name who will connect. In this case, the host name will be linuxcbtdb1, and we need to be sure that it'll connect with the proper host so we could just say call the user root or call the user something else that so doesn't matter what host it is. Let's call the user Linux CBT just for simplicity which means the user can log in from any host. So grant all on tempdb2 to Linux CBT. This should suffice. Then let's rerun the select. Now we have that new user but the user has no password so we should set a password for this particular user if we or rerun the grant that we just ran by executing an identified by and in between single quotes we'll specify XYZ123 so for root we're using ABC123 for next CBT we're specifying XYZ123 but it doesn't matter there's a user with a password who can log in from any host and this user has access to the tempdb2 database but we'll reveal as such by executing show grants for Linux CBT semicolon 
and it says the user is anonymous, but the user halls also has all privileges on tempdb2. So if within the context of tempdb2, the user has privileges, but outside of tempdb2, the user is just an anonymous, non-privileged user. Great. Now we can feel free to do this output redirection. So let's see what we're going to do here. We're going to dump tempdb and send it into a database called tempdb2. And this will allow it to be imported, or we could just create a new tempdb2 locally and import it into tempdb2. Either or, it doesn't matter. The database names do not need to be identical. Now, if the database names are not identical, we should ensure that the destination user has enough privileges to create objects. In this case, the user has privileges within tempdb2, which would suppose that we would use MySQL dump to dump a specific table allowing the destination user to import. If we want the user to actually create a database, then we should adjust the grant privileges so that the user is able to do so. And we'll switch it to star.star .star and then show grants for Linux CBT. Now the user on Linux CBT can create objects just in case there's a drop statement. Let's return and run that MySQL dump databases temp db. We'll send it to a pipe and then use the MySQL client followed by user Linux CBT, followed by host Linux CBT Media 1. And this will attempt to recreate the magic on the other side. And we didn't prompt for a password. The password is actually XYZ123. Let's try that again. Now, this says it was unable to connect to the remote system support. Let's double check if it's listening. That's the remote system Linux CBT Media 1 on local hosts or on all IP addresses. As you can see, it's listening on all IP addresses, so let's confirm that again. It says the databases dump through an error, but unknown MySQL server host, so the host name didn't check out. And the host is specified, or is not specified, it should be Linux CBT DB1. That's why we got the error. And the database name, as you can see, came up as Linux CBT Media 1, which should not be the case, so we specified it after the fact. So the server, let's try this again, the server is actually Linux CBT Media 1. We're going from DB1 to Media 1 with a password of XYZ123. And now it ran. Super. Now on the remote system we should see a new database called Linux CBT DB2. We'll log in using the user root, prompt for a password, and then execute a show databases which will show us the new database momentarily. Let's find it in our history. And there's a temp db2 database which was just created by virtue of the command that we ran. We just had a little difficulty with the syntax, but the syntax is as follows. Use dump to dump a local temp db database, but pipe it into the MySQL client which uses the user Linux CBT and the remote host's name and password to rerun the SQL statements rather than sending the SQL statements to a file. So this is one easy way to use pipes to perform those actions. Now the dump com command supports many other options such as quick which avoids using RAM when you're using larger tables for example or dumping larger tables. Generally when MySQL dump runs it stores the contents of the tables within a database all in memory. But if you have a large database larger than the amount of memory on the system that can become problematic so in that case you'd want to use the quick option so that it dumps it one record at a time such as the following quick would cause memory to not be used and then it runs additionally you can flush the logs if there are items that have not been committed to the database that are in the transaction logs you can use the flush logs option to avoid losing that data as well. And you can dump databases and ignore certain tables or specify or elect to dump specific tables. So there's a lot of flexibility with this command and we'll use it throughout our studies.